uh, Adam, who has contributed so much to South Central over the years and who was responsible for establishing the Somali language classes at South Central, which is just a huge achievement um, and has been very popular. And I actually took Somali one, the, the first semester of Somali, the, the very first time I came to South Central three years ago, and I just loved it. Um, I love the class, and it's still going online now. Um, and we are hoping to have a Somali 2 class at some point. We, we got kind of you were interrupted because of COVID and everything. It's been hard to continue. But in the future, I'm sure we will have it. And I really hope that Fanal will be the teacher someday because um, he has created his own textbook um, for teaching the Somali language. And it's a big passion of his. And he really shares with me the belief that um, bilingualism really benefits all of our students. And especially we want to encourage our students of Somali descent <coughs> to maintain and develop their Somali language ability um, and their reading and writing of Somali in, a, in order to be able to use the Somali language in their work. But really all of us should be learning Somali because it is the third most spoken language in Minnesota after English and Spanish. So I'm very proud to welcome Fana Adam back today um, to share his all his work and research and passion with us about the Somali language. Thank you, Fana. Good morning. Thank you so much, Karen, and all guests for who's going to attend my presentation about the beauty of Somali language. Um, as Karen mentioned it, okay, my uh, favorite and my passion is just for uh, um, learning language. So, um, especially I put my most of my efforts how Somali language can be added anywhere. In 2010, I opened, uh, I started my YouTube page, which I call it the beauty of Somali language. So if you go to YouTube and just put the video of Somali language, you'll find out all my videos, starting from alphabetical, uh, Somali alphabetical up to grammar and, and, and literature. So um, at least there are, uh, let's say, 50, 50 or 55 videos are on my YouTube. So um, uh -huh. and I've seen 3,000 something like subscribers, subscribers, something like that. So. Um, so that's kind of, uh, and first of all, what I decided just for uh, working with Somali language is um, when I found out that my children was missing their native language, and I started to teach them. And I say, oh, why are you, why you be selfish for yourself only for your children? Why don't you teach all Somali students? Somali mm -hmm. children who was born and grew up here and barely do not do not know for their language so that's why i decided just to open my youtube page and also i will show you later i have a show in ktv mankara here the tv here in mankara for the last oh. five years i think so oh. so it's good it's called learn somali language and i will share you the schedule later so when i finish for this presentation so if you want to know more about Somali language and also on the show, my show is not only for learning Somali language, it's learning for Somali language, learning for Somali children stories, uh, Somali traditional dancing, folklore dancing, something like that. So you will, if you want to understand and learn something about Somali culture, that is the best way. And it's only three days a week. It's um, Saturday, Sunday, and Mondays from six to seven. Hmm. So, and I will show you everything for the schedule. Also, you can go just to KTV. And if you have a cable for general or constellated uh, communication, so you can go, there is a journal that you can watch. This is, that, is that AM or PM for now? What is that? Is that AM or PM? 6 AM? Oh, oh sorry, that's it's PM. So AM is too early to wake up, so it's a PM, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, so let's. This is kind of the um, the logo of my show that I like to use. What's called the beauty of Somali language, and I like to use these words, which is kind of going two sides. It says like in Somali, bar ama baro, which roughly translation in English says teach or learn. 
But I mean, if you don't know learn some language or any language, whatever, and if you now teach, that's the point. So um, my presentation is focusing only for the Somali language, but I wanted just to give you an idea about before we go about the language, we need we wanted to get an idea about where is Somalia. Because when you're talking the language, you need to know the country first before everything. So Somalia, when we're talking, it's in the Horn of Africa, as you see here in the map. So when I'm talking Somalia, there, there are five parts, but now I'm talking only for the northern and the southern that united in 1960, and they make Somali Democratic Republic. I'm not talking for Somali Djibouti, I will talk later for that, but now geographic, geographical locations I'm talking is about only for north and south. So the total land of Somalia is 637, as you see, square kilometers. And the most are range lands or grazing lands, as we know Somalis are nomadic people, so they graze their animals from place to place, and they move from place to place around the country. So the coastline, we have the second longest coastline in Africa, after Madagascar. And also the main export of Somalia is livestock, as well as banana. So these are animal husbandry and agriculture are the most popular things that we do most of Somalis. Um, as I mentioned it in Africa, so just I want to go a little bit for a very short timeline. So how the voice is going? Can you hear me well? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you uh, very yeah? well. Okay, okay, sounds mm -hmm. great. Let me know, yeah. So, so I want to just give you a little bit for a timeline about Somalia and Africa. So this, this time that concerns Somalia, but I will just take four. Okay, in 1884, I don't know um, anyone of you heard for that date. This date in 1884 or this year is the blood year of African descents. It was the day that European countries decided to sit down with a round table and divided Africa to colonize. So it was a signing and decision for European countries to start colonizing in Af Africa. So the colony started from that day up to that year up to 1960. So most of African countries, they get back their independence from 1960 to 1964. So Somalia was the part of this African division. So, so that the five parts of Somalia um, the northern was under the colony of British, and the southern part was the colony of the Italian. Djibouti, which is the corner here at the top, was the colony of France. And also, Somali Kenya was under the British colony. And there is another Somali, it's called it Somali Ethiopia or Somali Ogaden. So this Somali Ogaden, they were under Ethiopia. And as you know, and maybe you hear that before, um, there's only two countries in Africa that never be colonized forever. And these two countries are Ethiopia, because it was a kingdom empire full at that time. So that empire, they made agreement with the colony. And that's why they never be colonized. So, and they took part of Somalia. So they're going to give Ethiopian embark part of Somalia. So we have the five parts of Somalia, and also the other, um, the other city, the other country. I mean, that was not colonized in Africa is called Liberia. And you can test the meaning of the word Liberia. It comes from liberation. So this. This country was established after the ending of slave trade, slave trade, I mean. So, Africans that were taken for, uh, for as a slave from Africa were taken back 
to Liberia, and they were settled here, Liberia, and that's why it's called liberation. So there is all, this only two countries were not colonized, but others were under the colony. So if I come back to Somalia, in 1960, the, in, I mean, yeah, June 26, 1960, the northern part of Somalia got its independence. And after, um, I think it's five, five days, or six days, something like that, in July 1st, the southern part got their independence from Italian colony, and they united what we call Somali Democratic Republic. So this united, it worked until 1969, which we have an, a parliament which was elected as a um, democracy, as a free. But in 1969 to 1991, the country there was um, military overthrew or a coup for the military. And after that, um, everyone knows that all Somalia is scattered around the world. For that, in 1991, starting of the civil war, civil war, and then after we have some traditional government, and then we have now federal government, which is something I don't believe. Because when we're talking about federal, we're talking for a people with different religion, with different culture, with different um, language. But Somali people cannot be a federal. That's what I believe. And that's something that I will believe until I die. Until I die. Okay. So, um, because federal is, it's not, it's not, cannot be applied to Somali, Somali people. So that is short timeline about Somalia, and so I want to come back to the the language. How the language connects all Somali five parties, and you see, when you see the flag of Somalia, you see the five stars. So this five star stands for the five parts of Somalia. So all Somalis, as you see here, you can read just for about all Somalis, they share with same language and same culture, and same religion. And I mentioned before, so this is Djibouti, and this is Somali, Ethiopia, and this is Kenya, and this is Northern and the Southern part. So the true map, the true map of Somalia, you can go in that way. That is the five parts of Somalia. So regardless of these borders and so they consider us as the same people because they speak so much la so same language, believe same religion and same culture, whether they are Somali from Ethiopia or from Kenya or from Djibouti or so and that is makes like um uh, this unity among Somali people makes them one of the Africans largest ethnic group. And this map probably shows you for Somali diaspora around the world. So after 1991, after civil war, so everyone escaped from civil war and just seeking for revisions for neighboring countries, and then they were settled for around the world. And the most places that we have most of Somalis are uh, you can find in North America, um, most of European countries. Um, and some are in Australia, so some are scattered around the world. So, um, and now I want to come back for the uh, the topic of my presentation about the beauty of Somali language. So, Somali language is a part or is a family of Cushitic language. So, Cushitic language we call for we will combine for Somali, Amfar and Oromo. So these three nations or these three people, the language is called Cushitic language. And they are very close together. They are very close. So when we're talking the word language, in Somali we use af. So if I want to say Somali language, I have to say af Somali. If I want to say Amfar language, I have to say Amfar af Amfar. If I want to say Oromo language, I have to say Afan or Roma. 
So half means the mouse. And I'm going to compare with some of Latin language. Okay, so um, and Latin they use what we call lang or lingua, which means tongue. So that is kind of where Kushitiv uses the mouse to say language. Um, the Latin they use um, lang as uh, the tongue. In the use of art.